Welcome back to Advanced Accounting 2. This chapter is on business combinations. Our first topic of business combinations is to first define what a business combination is, discuss control, as well as the forms of business combinations. Last week, we looked at how to account for investment in companies which resulted in passive involvement, such as if I were to buy Tesla shares. Sure, I would own some of the company, but I doubt Elon would suddenly take my phone calls. We also looked at significant influence. For example, if someone had two out of five board seats, while they couldn't make the company do something, they absolutely have seats at the table and could influence items such as strategic direction as well as the declaration of dividends. This week, we are going to look at a third type of ownership arrangement, control. A business combination occurs when a company acquires control of another company. A key element of control exists when the following are present. The power, the investor has power over the investee. The investor has the exposure or rights to variable returns from its investment with the investee. The investor has the ability to use its power to affect the amount of the investee's returns. So generally, our starting point is looking at share ownership. And generally, owning more than 50% of the shares gives control. Keep in mind, we are looking at the substance of the relationship over the form and it really asking who has the majority of risks and rewards of this business. When a business acquires control over another business, that is a business combination. There are three forms of business combinations. The purchase of net assets. You get control by buying the assets and liabilities that make up the business, where net assets equals assets less liabilities. When you purchase net assets, this could be very much like going into an a and and saying, a and I am buying you. You're buying all the ovens on the wall, you're buying all the seats, the pop machines, et cetera, et cetera. You literally go in, you buy the building and everything inside. Um, potentially, you sign on and acquire all the outstanding payroll liabilities, tax liabilities, uh, property tax liabilities, et cetera. So you go in and you physically buy that a &W. You Everybody knows that you are that owner of that a and The second form of business combination is a purchase of shares, where you buy enough shares from the shareholders to get control. In this case, you would get control if we went back to our a and example, but you would do so where you wouldn't be going in and buying each individual you know, pop machine and um, booth and, um, you know, signing agreement to take over each of the individual liabilities, but rather you're buying shares. So you're going to the former shareholder, buying their shares. You are now that shareholder with control. And the people that work there might not even know that you now control the use of their pop machines. You now control the use of their ovens. Uh, so it is a way to get control over the business uh, through purchasing the shares of the corporation. Now, you might also have a form of business combination through contractual agreement, where it creates a parent subsidiary relationship, but without any transaction or journal entries. The substance over the form uh, is one of um, business combination through that contractual agreement. We're gonna look more at that third type in a much later chapter, but for now, we're gonna be focusing on this chapter from the purchase of net assets, you know, I'm going in and buying the stoves and ovens, and et cetera. Uh, and then the purchase of shares. I'm going in, I'm getting control over the purchase of the ovens and the liabilities, but by going and directly purchasing that investment from the current uh, investor. When we have control, circling back to substance over form, we need to present our financial statements to show that control relationship through a business combination. We will discuss the mechanics of how to account for the different types of business combinations in future videos. For now, let's look at a question to start assessing our understanding of these nuances. Which of the following is not a key element of control? Is it A, exposure to gains and losses of the subsidiary? B, power over the subsidiary? 
C, the amount of money invested in a subsidiary. Or D, ability to influence the subsidiary's income and dividends paid. If you said C, amount invested in a subsidiary, you would be correct. The amount of money invested in a subsidiary is not a key element of control. So coming back to it, uh, maybe I invested a lot of money to me. Maybe I invested, you know, $100,000, million dollars uh, into Elon Musk's company. Uh, Tesla went out, bought the shares. That's a significant amount of money invested. Uh, significant to me. Is it significant to Tesla and the um, amount of shares that's standing or my ability to pick up the phone, call Elon and have him answer? No, absolutely not. It would still be a passive investment if that were the case. So amount of money invested in a subsidiary is not a key element of control. However, exposure to uh, the income and losses of the sub, power over the sub, making them do what we want them to do, uh, uh, including the ability uh, to influence the sub's income and dividends paid, absolutely are elements of control. So now that we've gotten familiar with control, as well as the different forms of business combinations, I, we're gonna go to the next video, but before we do, I would suggest making a mind map or some sort of tree which draws out what are the passive investments, what would uh, be the environment for a significant influence investment, and what would be, be the environment for a business combination, and what are the two main types of business combinations that we'll be looking at here. That is the purchase of the assets and purchase of the shares. Fill out those first two, passive influence, pardon me, passive investments and significant influence, um, and how we would account for those, and then leave the next two branches, the business combination, the uh, purchase of assets and pur purchase of shares, leave those open, and then as we go through subsequent videos, start filling those in. Then, by the time you circle back and you are have to actually apply, perhaps in a project or an examination situation, you clearly understand, you know, what are the circumstances in which one of those types of um, arrangements may come into place, and then how do you account for them? All right, that's it for me in this video. I'll see you in the next.